In the beginning, there was Eros, and life was its will. Mycenae, 1500 BC. Georgina, aged 12, is dressed in a simple white robe. At the entrance to a vast stables of Aegean proportions, in which over 500 black stallions are tethered either side of a central aisle that stretches endlessly into the distance. The sheer number of animals housed together in this confined space has created an ambience as rich in sound as it is in odour. Georgina stands and absorbs the heady atmosphere. From her POV, as she makes her way along the aisle, looking from side to side at the magnificent beasts, now and then, the distended organ of one of the horses catches her eye and, combined with the sight of their gleaming muscular flanks, serves to awaken the spirit of Eros in her. When Georgina finally reaches the stable's end, she finds her exit barred by a loose horse. Standing in front of her, the stallion remains motionless fixed in Georgina's unflinching gaze. Zoom into Georgina's face as the stallion begins to walk slowly towards her. Reaching out, Georgina gently caresses the horse's velvety snout. The stallion responds by lightly grazing his head across her shoulders and arms, his deep, warm breath casting a sensuous zephyr over her bare skin. Zoom into Georgina's face as she continues her silent concupiscent dialogue with the beast. A glance beneath the horse's flanks reveals the handsome beast's long, black, distended member. As Georgina withdraws her hand, the stallion takes a few agitated paces back, then suddenly and dramatically launches himself onto his hind legs, whinnying loudly as he does so. Georgina, her face still a picture of serenity and calm, looks wide-eyed as the magnificent animal now towers above her, his rigid penis knocking in agitation against his underside. We watch as a trail of semen jetting out from the tip of the horse's penis transfigures into a swirling avian-like form and finally into a seabird flying high above the next scene. Blackpool Beach Late 1950s, early 1960s. Georgina is now 12 years old. An audience of adults and children are being entertained by a Punch and Judy show on the beach. 
Pulling back, we see Georgina in fits of laughter as she enjoys the entertainment. Punch is putting Judy across his knee and severely caning her bottom. When the show is over, the crowds disperse and Georgina suddenly finds herself alone. In the distance, she hears the entertainment on the pier and soon she begins to make her way across the sands towards it. Against a slate grey sky, several seagulls drift kite-like overhead. Nearby, a group of young boys are playing. Georgina, still flat-chested and wearing just her bikini bottoms, stops, looks over and watches them. One of the boys soon notices her and after a while gestures for her to join them. But Georgina is too coy and before long starts to wander off. Their interest peaked and in search of some amusement the boys begin making their way towards her. POV Georgina as she suddenly finds herself encircled by a gang of rough-looking youths. At the instigation of their skin-headed leader, they begin making disparaging and unkind remarks about her figure. See, I told you she was a boy. No, she ain't got no nuts. There's only one way to find out. Suddenly, one of the boys, a rotten-toothed, baleful-eyed individual, jumps forward and starts to tug at Georgina's bottoms. The others at once take their cue and follow suit, attacking her from all sides. In a desperate attempt to maintain her dignity, Georgina struggles to stop them, whilst at the same time screaming for them to desist. But her resistance is soon overcome by the brute force of the mob. With her bikini briefs removed, they leer and jeer at her almost hairless sex. Georgina is utterly terrified. Striking out wildly at one of them with her fists, in defiance, she eventually succeeds in escaping from their clutches and runs for her life. POV the gang as they chase after her. Georgina is sprinting at full pelt when suddenly she trips and falls to the ground. The boys all pile on top of her and turning her over roughly shout loudly in unison, a boy, a boy, a boy. Eventually, the gang lose interest in her and, at length, take their leave. Face down in the sand, Georgina watches them through tearful eyes as they eventually turn into a straggle of tiny zen-like letters in the distance. A shell is partially submerged in the sand beside her and reaching out, Georgina picks it up, looks at it, and begins to sob. High above her, the plaintive notes of the gulls echo in sympathy. Underneath a dark, barnacle-encrusted pier, Georgina watches the waves as they wash and slop through the rusty structure. Above her, she hears the sound of the distant funfair. Suddenly, Georgina notices a dark, hirsute, middle-aged man standing in the water close by and watching her. The man calls over to her, asking her why she's looking so sad. He gradually gains Georgina's trust by flattering her, telling her how like a beautiful little mermaid she is. With such confidence-inspiring compliments, Georgina's faith in herself gradually begins to be restored. 
The man now challenges Georgina to see if she can swim out to him. Fishing for further compliments, Georgina dives under the water. When she surfaces, she is a few feet away from him. The man continues to charm her, and then asks Georgina to see if she can swim between his legs. Cue the music, as the dragonfly now appears above and circles around the man. Zoom into his eyes, and cut to Georgina, who, flirting outrageously, dives under and swims towards the man. But as she approaches him, she sees through the murky water that he is both naked and fully erect. Close up the sound of her heartbeat as Georgina peers through the water. Give the man as Georgina begins to swim around him, her circular underwater passage mirrored by the spiralling flight of the dragonfly above. Cue the voiceover of Georgina as an old woman remembering the sense of control and confidence that her power over him gave her. Diving back and forth between the man's legs, Georgina deliberately brushes herself against his thighs. As she kicks out after emerging the other side, her foot comes briefly into contact with the man's penis. The music builds in intensity as Georgina's flirtatious games continue. The next time Georgina swims through his legs, the man reaches out to grab her. But Georgina is too quick for him, and before long the man has become hopelessly excited and frustrated by Georgina's titillation. Eventually, unable to bear it any longer, the man dives in after her. Cut to Georgina twisting and turning with the nimble grace of a water sprite. She is soon far beyond his reach. POV, the frustrated man, as he watches Georgina emerge from the water and walk off along the beach, turning after a few strides to look round at him and smile coquettishly. On the pier above, an entertainer announces the winner of the prize draw. <laughs>